Satellite questions are cool. They're a throwback to Newton's gravity that we did in grade 11 and then connects it to centripetal motion. Um, a satellite is, we've got our Earth. A satellites, I draw in a little thing with like solar panels coming off the side. That'd be the mass of M. And they're moving around in circles. When a satellite's in orbit, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. When we set up F net equals MA, as you've kind of gotten used to, anything with a circle is going to be an F net equals MA problem. The A is going to turn into V squared over R. In this case, there's only one force, the force of gravity. It's been a while, but Newton's gravity is GMM over R squared. Uh, it's been a while, but the R that we plug in is a distance from the center of Earth all the way out to where the satellite is. So our R value is the height of the satellite plus the radius of Earth. In this particular question, I googled it. Uh, GPS satellites are roughly 20,000 kilometers. Um, it's not exactly 20,000, but close enough. Uh, we've got to put that in meters and then add on the radius of the Earth. This is 20 million, and then the radius of the Earth is 6.37 million. So we get 26.37 million meters. That's not the best form, but I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, back to our centripetal motion. Uh, that's what we'll plug in for R. Uh, one of these R's is going to cancel with one of those R's. Uh, kind of cool, the mass of the satellite actually factors out. So we get this cool equation, that V squared is gm over r. That's a little function that connects the speed to the radius. Every GPS satellite, any satellite that's at that 20,000 kilometer height, they're all going to be going the same speed. We couldn't have a satellite at 20,000 kilometers going faster than whatever this function gives. Just the nature of gravity and how that causes centripetal, every satellite at that point is all going the same speed. So this is a cool function that connects V and the R value. Uh, for our GPS satellite, um, well, we know that G is always 6.67. That's uh, orbiting the Earth. That mass is a 5.97 number. Uh, you don't have to memorize numbers. If you need to, Google them, or they'll be on worksheets when we need them. The R is that 26 million number. And then we got to crunch it out. Uh, we've got a square root to deal with. Um, when I practiced it, I got 3886 in meters per second. So every satellite that's 20,000 kilometers above Earth, they would all be going 3,886 meters per second. To figure out the time period, well, to figure out how long it takes to orbit the Earth, I'm going to call that time period, kind of uh, connecting it back to periodic motion or waves and sound from last year. It's kind of like what we did in the rubber stopper lab. It's going at a constant speed in a circle. So we can say that the d it travels in one orbit is 2 pi r, and the time it takes for that is the time period. Since I already know the 3886 number, I could plug that directly into 2 pi r over t. But just to get something cool, I'm going to go back to the v squared equals gm over r. v is 2 pi r over t, based on the geometry of the circle, and v squared is equal to gm over r. If we clean that up, we're going to get another function for pi squared r squared over t squared equals gm over r. Crisscross things around, we get something like, there's different ways to write it, gmt squared equals 4 pi squared r cubed. That's another function, but this time it connects the time period to the radius. It should make sense that since all the satellites at that 20,000 kilometer mark are going the same speed, it's going to take them the same amount of time to orbit the Earth. If I didn't ask for the speed, we could build this equation and just solve for time directly. For the GPS satellites, we're asked for the time period. So that's going to be 4 pi squared. Uh, the r was at 26.37 number. We've got a cubit. 
and then flipping the G and the M to the denominator to get T all by itself. Uh, mass of the Earth is here. And this is actually T squared. That's a big plug and chug. You gotta work with your scientific notation button. Watch your order of operations so you make sure you're cubing just the radius and then square rooting the whole shebang. Um, at the end of all that, I get a time period of 42,638, give or take. If you round that off, that is almost 12 hours. So a GPS satellite is zipping around the Earth going almost 4,000 meters per second, and it takes roughly 12 hours for it to get around the Earth. GPSs are really kind of cool. They're programmed with special relativity since they're going so fast. They're programmed with general relativity since they're higher where gravity is a little bit weaker. Um, but what we'll need for now is what we'll use again are these ideas that there's a function that connects the speed to the radius and another function that connects the radius to the time period. Uh, this second one, that GMT squared 4 pi squared r cubed equation, that's one of Kepler's laws. If you go into Earth and space, you'll hear about that one again.